Welcome to the Good Quality Podcast presented by Swish Cultures with your host, Ashton Smith Gooden, shining light onto women in sports and entertainment. On this week's episode, we have former Cal Berkeley All Star, WNBA first round pick, and current LA Sparks forward, Christina Neewood. Hey, Christine, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for being a part of the podcast. I know it's a little early over there, a little earlier than normal. Six o'clock over there, so. No, that's true. Uh, I want to congratulate you for becoming part of the Sparks franchise. How do you feel? I'm super excited. Um, I'm just really glad that I have this chance to be with really good um, vets and be like in a family-like atmosphere. No, most definitely. And you just got to Florida, correct? And now you're inside the bubble at IMG? Yeah, we are. We just got here two days ago. Um, We are quarantining for four days, so we have two more days to go for the quarantine period. And then we get to practice, and then eventually we'll be able to play games. No, that's dope. Are you excited? What's the most exciting part about starting your season? Um, It's just like... There's just so many things happening around the world that, like, I'm just blessed that I get to do what I love um, with a really great group, and we have big goals this season. So just, like, staying in that mindset of being grateful of, like, um, being on a great organization with really good teammates and um, having this opportunity to win a championship this year is just really cool. Yeah, most definitely. I remember us talking prior to us being on the podcast how it's a little different because of the pandemic and everything, but it seems like you guys are still mentally focused and, you know, tapped in into the season regardless of what's happening. So it seems like you guys are ready to win a championship. Yeah, we are. Um, We're just trying to stay focused again, like not letting the outside pressure get to us and just trying to like, like take it day by day and um, not look too far ahead in the future and just stay present. Yeah, no, I get that for sure. So going a little bit back, let's go back to the day, your Cal days, right? Mm -hmm. So in 2019, you were drafted first round, uh, ninth pick. How was that feeling when you got drafted into the WNBA? Um, It was incredible. Like I worked my whole college career to get that moment and to be able to play alongside Again, like great players and being in Connecticut, I played on a championship contender team. They went, um, they lost in the last round to get to Washington. Yeah. Like being on that team where they were just so focused on that mind and they had that mindset of winning that championship. Um, they've been together for so long. So being able to be a part of that organization, that program was just rewarding. But um, I'm really glad I ended up in uh, LA because like, that's home for me, being at Cal, um, having that background, having those connections here in California, being with a good um, organization that believes in me. And um, I'm really just grateful for this opportunity. Yeah, no, we're super excited that you're here in LA with us. I saw you in this, I saw you working out. <laughs> you're going crazy this summer before you went to Florida. You're going crazy and, and some dunks. I'm expecting some dunks coming. I know, I'm expecting some too. Hopefully, like, I feel like I'm super confident in my game right now. And I was working out with Chris um, when I was in LA. So, like, I feel like he just helped me um, build my confidence up. And um, he made me dunk after every practice so and work out. So, like, that made me even more confident in, like, dunking the ball and um, having that feel. So. Yeah, no, I saw it. You seemed very confident. And so I'm super excited to see what the season has for you because I already know you're about to kill. And speaking of your workouts, I heard about the LeBron story. I wasn't there when it happened, but you got to explain to everybody what happened when you were supposed to meet LeBron. Um, I got... Okay, so, like, obviously I don't like um, interrupting people's conversations. So I think he was, like, with Dwayne Wade and JR, and um, they were, like, talking. And I was, like, I'm not going to go up there. And I'm not going to go up there around and just <laughs> interrupt them. That's like, rude. So I went and did my workout. And I thought he was going to be there longer. So obviously I was going to, like, say hi after he was done talking. But obviously, like, I had to do my workout and stuff. So yeah. I went to work out, and they were leaving. And I was, like, oh, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
my goodness. I already know, though, you're going to get another chance uh, chance to meet him. And he already knows who you are, and he definitely respects your game. So that's going to be dope when you get to meet him the second time and actually have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? No, for sure. <laughs> and then, um, but going back to your career within, you know, the WNBA and your transition from college, I think um, a lot of people don't understand the grind that women go through in the basketball world. So would you mind like going a little bit deeper into like you guys do your WNBA season to go overseas, but go a little bit more in depth about it? Yeah, so we play in the WNBA for the four to five months and then we go overseas, we have like a week and a half. Um, sometimes we'll have two weeks, some people have longer, but I know like you have like a week to like two weeks to go to your designated overseas team. And some people are going to China, some people are going to Turkey, some people are going to Russia. Um, it just depends. So I, um, last year, I took time off before I went overseas. I wanted to spend time with my family and just like collect my thoughts. And um, I went in January or at the end of December, like right before Christmas, um, which was hard because I wasn't able to spend Christmas with my family. But um, I know some of my teammates, my former teammates, they went like two days after the, WN the WNBA season. And it's just like crazy. Yeah. They don't even have that break, that like time to spend with their families or their loved ones. They have to just go straight, um, straight to isolation almost. Um, right. You're in a foreign country. Uh, they don't speak the same language as you, but you're able to make connections. So I think that's like the most important part, being um, able to play with the WNBA and then taking your talent to play overseas. Like you're playing essentially like year round and um, it's really hard on a lot of people's bodies and like their mind and um, yeah. Yeah, no, I can, we, we talked about this a lot and how you were saying it was, it's starting to become a little easier for you because you're getting used to like the system of, you know, having your regular season in the States and then going overseas and how it was kind of Americanized when you went to Turkey. So it kind of helped with the transitioning of playing over there. And you were able to still connect with family through like FaceTime and all the technology that we have. Thank God, because I can't even imagine back in the day playing overseas and not having, you know, the communication that we do now. So that's most definitely, you know, something that is a blessing in today's age. So and then with that being said, um, you know, a lot of stuff is happening and you have a platform both, you know, now established in WNBA as well as overseas. So with everything that's happening, you know, out here, how do you feel that you've been able to use your platform to promote positive messages? Um, I think right now, like with everything going on with the social injustice, um, I think I'm just trying to target that, especially for women's rights, mm -hmm. um, being able to have that voice, being, the, being in the WNBA the most progressive um, league in the world. Like every single time they come through, for any social inequality. So it's been crazy seeing a lot of my teammates stand up for what they believe in. And then that's giving me the confidence to stand up for what I believe in as well. So um, I have really great role models and really great mentors and just leaders on my team. So that's just giving me the confidence to be who I really am. Yeah. And I figured out that life was just too short to take it. Like you have to use your platform for what you believe in and inspire the youth. No, most definitely. And I commend, I commend you for that because, you know, sometimes it feels like maybe I shouldn't say what's right. And then when you do say, you kind of be like, uh, was it the right thing to say? But I've been really keeping up with you. And, you know, that's cool to have, you know, someone that's a role model for the next generation to be able to feel comfortable within themselves and that you're being a role model. And as a black woman and not just an athlete, how do you, you know, cope with the things that, you know, especially during the time, like I said, uh, mentioned earlier with like Black Lives Matter and like the social injustice, how do you cope with those things within yourself? It's just been a whirlwind, you know, just like flying everywhere. Um, we were in quarantine, it started off being quarantine and then it started off with us trying to find our passions and find what we wanted to do and find what we truly, truly, truly believe in. 
and then like it turned into like there was a light like there was this, this whole bright light shined on the social inequalities in the world while we're in a quarantine so everyone's trying to figure out okay like i there's still a major pandemic happening right. but i want to fight like i want to use my voice and i want to use my platform to um change what's been going on for generations so i think people were conflicted on I want to go protest, but like I live with my parents, like where I want to go protest, but I'm not able to because I have underlying health, like a health um, disease. Yeah, or like, that's me. Um, it's been like, I think it's been hard for a lot of people because they don't, and a lot of people don't understand that you can donate, you yeah. can um, educate, you can educate yourself, you can educate others, you can. Um, Go on social media and use your platform in that way like you don't have to go be on the front lines you can do other things behind the scenes and then the people that are front lines don't understand that some people don't understand that it's not all about social media it's about it's, it's about like donating it's about educating others it's about educating yourself so um it's just like a it's just hard like knowing what to say knowing what to do when we have so much information yeah no that's you said it perfectly and with that being said i'll list some of the links that people can donate to or some resources that they can use whoever's listening to post on their social media or give to friends family because i think within the community especially the people that are listening that we can directly impact we can you know go from one person to another person and then before you know it, it's a whole network of people that are, are tapped in into fixing the problems that we are having currently. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the best way that we can spread the word without, you know, having, like how you said, having to go out and protest, protest if you have an underlying illness, like myself, I have type one diabetes, but I, I can still participate. And I think you said it the best way possible. And with that being said, on the other side of the spectrum, I've noticed that you've been using your, your social media in a way to showcase your fashion. So how is it tapping into the fashion world as an athlete, you know, kind of, it's a little bit of a different transition, but I think it's amazing. Yeah, like, I think when I was overseas, I had a lot of time and I was just, I've been someone that's super passionate on just like figuring out what fits my body and figuring out how to um, use just like my platform to, again, like inspire younger girls. And so, like, for me, I think, like, when I'm not playing basketball, like, I'm just into just, like, fashion and designing and um, mm -hmm. connecting with other people, connecting with other talent, and creating things that um, everybody can learn, everybody, like, if you're tall, if you're, if you're taller, like, from 5'10", like, I feel like a lot of brands now, like, they, like, stop at 5'10", and you're yeah. like, okay, like, so if I'm not 5'10", then what am I going to wear? And I'm 6'4", so, like, I was, and I know so many of my friends are always, like, Christine, where do you get your clothes from? Like, where should I go shopping? Um, this doesn't fit me exactly how it's said on the website, or this doesn't fit me exactly how I thought it was going to fit me. So I've been just trying to, like, collaborate with, like, brands that really um, pride themselves on having lines for taller women and um, fitting properly. So when I was working with ASOS, it was super cool because they have a tall line and they were able yeah. to like um send clothes and I was able to like see if this fit me properly and so if something fits me probably I'm going to post it so other people can like be tuned in and um I think a lot of people like they don't like sharing where they got their clothes right like, yeah <laughs> like why like why are we having that like everyone like we should all like we should all share our resources so we can all progress together you know yeah, no, it's difficult. I don't think people understand how difficult it is to find clothes that fits you as a tall woman. It is super hard. Do we see a Christine line coming out in the future? Is that a goal or? Honestly, like, I feel like I need to, like, figure out what, like, I had this idea, like, I was going to make one and then all the profit was going to go to domestic violence survivors and, um, that's dope. That's and like, or like people like in foster care that can't afford to like go shopping and um 
I think that like something, if I'm doing something that's going to help others, then I'm down for it. But if I'm just doing something that I don't really know where the money's going to, or it's a brand that I just can't stand by, then I'm just like, okay, then why am I, why am I working with you? Why am I doing this with you? It's like, I don't really know where this money's going to go to. So um, I'm being super mindful of the people that I work with and um, I'm just trying to like figure out ways to help other people and collaborate and just like make a line that's going to give tall women confidence. But alongside like, I know that there's a lot of people like in middle school and elementary school that they're growing at a, like a higher rate than the other classmates and they still don't, they're like, okay, like I can't fit into like an ASOS tall section or I can't fit into like, like a miss something like misguided or something, but like I want to like work with this for kids or something like that, like a kid's um fashion line, just so I can like feel confident and like like you're in middle school and you don't know what to wear and you're wearing yeah. like clothing and I know like that's hard for younger um, girls as well. So I'm being super mindful of like everything that I'm doing, um, so I can help everybody. No, that's great. And I, I heard you kind of keep repeating about like the confidence aspect within a person. And was there, or is there any advice that you can give to kids, um, adults, you know, women our age that are athletes, maybe not athletes, but any advice to help build upon confidence in every aspect of their life? Um, like for me, like I feel like confidence is just like, and confidence is a mindset, but at the same time, like, you have to understand that, like, you can't be confident unless you, like, do, like, that inner work, that inner, um, that inner self-healing, like, work on that, like, childhood feeling. Like, there's just so many different aspects of confidence, and I feel like society kind of um, classifies confidence as just, okay, like, I feel, I feel good about myself, but it's so much deeper than that. And I'm learning more about just like building confidence within myself, like reading, educating myself, um, meditating, uh, just like being around positive people. Um, so like, I think it's just so much deeper than just like what society thinks confidence is or what confidence sounds like or what confidence looks like. Yeah, confidence takes a lot of work it doesn't just come out of nowhere like people make it seem and you broke it down perfectly showing that you got to really heal yourself and that's important if you if you can't heal within yourself how are you supposed to project that and make it seem like you have it together you know what i'm saying yeah and it's going to show up it's going to show up in every aspect of your life if you don't figure out what works for you first you know exactly yeah, yeah. i mean Christine, thank you so much for this amazing conversation. Is there any last words that you want to give to the people that are listening to this um, podcast? Oh, thank you for listening first. And second, um, I'm just really proud of you. Like, I feel like this podcast, oh, thanks. Uh, it's just like, it's just going to affect a lot of people's lives, like listening in, tuning in. Um, and I know you had Lindsay on the other, the other yeah. week. Shout out to Lindsay. I know. Um, so again, like just bringing dope people on and hearing their story. I'm really proud of you for doing that. No, I appreciate it. I definitely want your guys' stories heard because they're super important. And I feel like you guys have a lot of great advice to not just only women, but anybody that's listening, you know, they can easily pick through what applies to them the best. And if we can help the community any way we can, you know, that's what we're here for. We're not just here to just you know, showcase, like, you know, entertaining stuff, but we want to get down to the, to the really important stuff that I think people need to hear. So I definitely appreciate you for that compliment because, guys, it's very hard to get a compliment from Christine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, on a serious note, Christine, I'm super excited to see what you're going to bring to the Sparks. I know you're going to kill it. Um, I'm definitely going to keep up with your schedule. If do you know um, when your games are, are going to start? Um, we don't really know now, but um, we know when it's going to start, but we don't know our schedule. So when I figure out the schedule, I'm going to send it to you. Um, okay. Yeah, like I'm going to send it to you. <sighs> right now, we're just trying to figure out our practice schedule and our lifting schedule. So it's been like kind of like crazy, but 
I'm just I'm just grateful to be here finally and starting season. Yeah. No, for sure. So everybody be on the lookout at Swish Culture's Instagram page, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and we'll drop the schedule uh, for the Sparks and for the WNBA in general so you guys can keep tabs on your favorite WNBA players like Christine Inigwe, which has been amazing. Thank you so much, Christine, for being a part of the podcast. Thank you for having me.